What's going on, beautiful people? And welcome back to another comic book review video where I say words about a comic that I read and you, the magically delicious, listen. It is I, your crazy Nicolas Cage, your steward of Gundor, your genius, billionaire playboy, basic YouTuber philanthropist, Supercliff. And would you guys be ever so kindly as to smash that like and subscribe button? because every little bit helps in this crazy, uncanny YouTube world. And today, guys, we are continuing with DC Suicide Squad, issue number seven, written by the majestic Robbie Thompson, with the pencils by Eduardo Pensica, and the colors by Marcelo Mayalo, I butchered your name and I apologize, <laughs> and Alex Sinclair. And so without further ado, let's get freaky. Alrighty, folks, so... This issue is going to start us off with the one, the only, Ambush Bug. A character who literally no one cares about. Though I'm sure there's some crazy cult out there that worships the guy. I don't know, there's probably like five of you, but I digress. Now, quick side note about the character of Ambush Bug. Dude is one of those obscure characters who can break the fourth wall in comics. Basically, he's DC's wannabe version to Marvel's Deadpool except way less cool and much, much more forgettable than the Merc with the Mouth. Ambush Bug does possess one power, which is that he can teleport himself anywhere that he wants. So at least he's got that going on for him. But yeah, essentially, that's what we are seeing. We are seeing Ambush Bug breaking down the fourth wall, providing us readers with recap regarding the current situation of the Suicide Squad on how Amanda Waller is hell-bent towards creating and molding her very own Justice League. And while Ambush Bug is providing us with this recap, the page zooms out and we see Ambush Bug along with the Suicide Squad relaxing on a beach with Ambush Bug playing around in the sand with action figures. Action figures that are straight up replicas of the squad. Thus it's here where Ambush Bug straight up tells the squad that everything they are seeing is a lie. Rather than being on a beach, the squad is instead trapped within a simulation within a simulation <laughs> and bada bing bada boom that is exactly what's happening because as we transition away from this glorious beach setting we are taken into the unclassified black site base that waller and the squad are currently residing in since bella reeve have been compromised by the forces of checkmate and those among the justice league and what we see here are the members of the squad trapped within capsules and attached to their heads are these mechanical devices seemingly projecting this beach simulation through their minds. Now the reason that this is happening is because Waller after the whole debacle of what we saw go down in the Suicide Squad annual book, Waller wants to institute obedience and loyalty into her squad. Thus the simulation is, is a basically a way for her to get inside of everyone's head as a as a way of saying, hey, I'm the boss, and this fantabulous beach, <laughs> it's mine. Your lives are mine. Everything about you and everything you thought you knew is mine. And if you don't like it, if you don't want to show me the respect, boom, goes your head. And that is exactly what we are seeing on display. A sheer amount of disrespect for a squad, treating them not as beings, but as weapons, as tools especially when it comes to the character of Match. Because following the reveal that happened in the Suicide Squad annual, we found out that Match was actually the one playing the role of Superboy. And upon Match learning the truth, Match feels lied to. He feels that his existence has been for naught. Thus, because of this, Match is furious. He is super pissed off at Waller, since she is the one responsible for drugging Match to begin with compromising his mind to firmly believe himself as the one and only Superboy. And Waller, she doesn't give a singular damn, because at the end of the day, Waller's going to do what she does. She's going to treat Match like a caged animal, because at the end of the day, Match wasn't meant to be Superboy, rather, he was meant to become Amanda Waller's Superboy. Elsewhere on the Suicide Squad island, we see Talon waking up in a hospital bed, and looking over him is Amanda Waller. What a way to wake up. <laughs> now, Amanda Waller 
tells Talon that, that the gig is up. She knows that he's been faking his multiversal condition. Because don't forget folks, Talon's been punking everyone by saying the word who over and over again and faking his nauseaness due to multiversal travel. Basically, this act is an attempt to get a jail out of free card from the Suicide Squad. Now, fortunately for Talon, Waller doesn't know but he's Rick Flagg's inside man. However, that's not to say that Talon is in the safe zone. Hells no. Because within moments, doctors come in with surgical tools, for they are about to work on Talon, because Waller requires his obedience. But more importantly, Waller requires his verbal communication skills. Now, this is when we pick up with Peacemaker, currently in the jungle, doing what he's doing over in the Swamp Thing book, trying to find a piece of the green for Waller. And through virtual comms, we learn from Waller that the reason she sent Peacemaker on this mission was not so that he can get killed, but rather to reignite his mind, reignite the determination Peacemaker has for achieving peace. Because lately, Peacemaker has been questioning Waller's integrity towards achieving peace. Therefore, if he can accomplish a mission, it will grant him the confidence that he needs towards Waller. Or at least that's what Waller is planning on. By the way, side note, I am really hyped for James Gunn's Peacemaker show. That thing is going to be balls deep amazing and completely inappropriate, and I'm so down. So, so yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments section about your thoughts on the Peacemaker upcoming series. Are you guys excited? I'm just, I'm really hyped about it. So, yeah, let's talk about it. But anyways, now this is where we pick back up the squad within the simulation. Within a simulation. Uh, <laughs> and as everyone is slowly losing their minds, wondering what is real and what isn't, the squad are suddenly fighting off a squad of demons. And while this is all going down, Ambush Bug reveals to Nocturna that she isn't this world's Nocturna. She's from a different Earth. And that following her capture at the hands of Bloodsport, guilty, Waller messed with her mind so that she'd forget everything that happened in her life. Waller, similar to what she did to Match, added fake memories into Nocturna's mind so that her past life wouldn't compromise the mission. And upon learning this, Nocturna is livid. She is now determined to destroy Amanda Waller times 3,000. Eventually, after fighting off the demons, along with the arrival of Match, the squad are soon communicated by a hologram of Amanda Waller, and she lets the squad know that they are her toys and that they will follow her orders or else. Now, Amanda Waller gives the squad their new assignment, which involves the squad being sent to hell, literally. And their target is the Rock of Eternity. Shazam! Um, <laughs> and as the squad makes their arrival in the Caverns of Hell via teleportation, thanks to Ambush Bug, they are soon met with, with similar demon monsters that they fought in the simulation. Except only this time, these demons are the real deal. Thus, the Suicide Squad suit up and everyone, from Match to Ambush Bug, everyone is kicking a bunch of demon ass. Now, it's during this fight where Match is shown to be betraying himself to be Superboy, despite everything that has happened, because Match is still dedicated to being Superboy, to being a hero. And if he has to face off against the forces of hell to do so, then so be it. However, this only pisses off Bloodsport, because he's not the sort of guy to take orders, especially from a person who's pretending to be Superboy. It's just, it's too weird for him. Like, there's just no way Bloodsport is down for any of this. Thus, it causes these two to bicker. But suddenly, off panel, a voice calls over, telling our characters to get Amanda Waller on the comms because they have a message for her. And from there, we pan over to see who is talking and whom we see are all the deceased members of the Suicide Squad who have dubbed the name The Hell Squad. And their message is that they are coming for Waller. The Hell Squad is coming for Amanda Waller. Dun, dun. And that, folks, was Suicide Squad, issue number seven. And overall, it was okay. You know, unfortunately, this issue suffers from the book's biggest status quo shift, that being the debut of Ambush Bug as the squad's newest recruit. And like, holy crap and a crap stick, Robbie Thompson wants you to know that Ambush Bug is a part of this book. This issue is littered with Ambush Bug. And sadly, I found it to be quite annoying. Yeah, I understand that, you know, Ambush Bug is a character that can break the fourth wall. You know, that's sort of his thing. But man, 
does his presence get old extremely fast. And a lot of his jokes, they really didn't hit. I honestly felt that Calibra was way more funnier in this issue than Ambush Bug. He was just so annoying. And you know, typically I'm not wanting to complain about those about that sort of thing in comics. Like Deadpool's pretty cool and whatnot. And you know, I don't mind Ambush Bug, but just in this issue, he was so it's like, like, shut up. <laughs> but fortunately, the art by Eduardo Pensica continues to be consistent with the book's tone, providing its particular gritty style that is definitely a prime staple of Suicide Squad storytelling. And of course, Alex Sinclair's colors are a work of gold. As always, the man proves to be the goat of coloring. Basically, the art for this book continues to maintain my interests. So yeah, hopefully issue 8 can pick up the story and present itself in a, in a much less annoying manner. Like, okay, we know Ambush Bug is a part of the story. We don't need constant panels of Ambush Bug advertisement. Like, please. <laughs> now, in order to end this review on a positive note, that last page reveal featuring the past squad members, the, the Hell Squad readying themselves up for revenge was badass. Thus, I cannot wait to see where all that goes. Suicide Squad issue number seven gets a 7.5 out of 10.